Hey, hello. In this video, we're going to look at characteristic functions, their definition, and a few properties. And this is going to be one of several videos on characteristic functions, moment generating functions, factorial generating functions. I'm creating a, a playlist of short videos of you know everything in that topic. So this is actually the third video in the series. The first two looked at the absolute value um, of the expected value and the inequality associated with it. The second one looked at uh, the derivatives of a characteristic function being finite. Um, here we're going to let x be a random variable with PDF f. The characteristic function denoted by uh, phi of x, you know, phi of t and Sometimes this X is left off if it's understood what we're talking about. Uh, it's also called a, a Fourier transform of F, and it's defined like this. Uh, phi of T is the expected value of E to the ITX. Okay? So if it's discrete, it's literally, you know, you put this in times the, the probably mass function sum over all values. If it's continuous, you integrate overall values um, and that's it now this here using um, Euler's identity can be rewritten as um, cosine plus I sine um, now we're not going to cover that here but it's it's uh, there's so many videos on it where you take the Taylor expansion of this and re, you know, and then the properties of I, and it can be rewritten as the uh, cosine and sine. And so we're just going to assume that that's true, and it is true. But there's so many videos out on it, I'm just going to skip that step. So this piece is is equal to this, and this piece is equal to this. Um, now, um, this, I mean. For the sum, you can sum this and then add this, and that's what we do, just another little step. You can break it into pieces. Instead of integrating this whole thing, you can integrate it in pieces. Um, so now let's look at some of the properties. Um, phi, phi of uh, zero is one. Um, the absolute value of the characteristic function is bounded by one. It's uniformly continuous. Um, if uh, phi of x plus d, where d is a constant, can be rewritten in terms of, of the characteristic function of x like this. Um, if we have a random variable c times x, it can, it can also be rewritten in terms of the characteristic function for x. So it, make it explicit should be that and and then if we have a linear combination of for x then the moment generating function can be rewritten as you know a function of the moment generating function for x in this form and the derivatives of this characteristic function evaluated at zero generate the moments of our random variable x this is assuming that the nth moment is finite and uh, I guess technically that should, I should have it like this. It's for all n. We're just going to go through these proofs. Um, some of them are simple, some are a little more complicated. Here, uh, point one, you plug in zero. That means put in zero for t. And e raised to zero is this. And that's one. Inspect value one is one. Um, to show that it's bounded, we have the absolute value of our characteristic function, which by definition is this. And in my first video on this playlist, I showed that the, the absolute value of the expectation is less than the expected value of it, the absolute value. And so I have a video on showing that this inequality is always true. And then if you look at this, the modulus or absolute value of this function, it is one. And in my first or second video, I prove that. And so the characteristic function is bounded. And again, see the first two videos in this playlist. Um, 
to show that it's uh, absolutely continuous, let's let uh, S be greater than T and define, let H be this difference. And so let's look at this uh, absolute value of the, the, these two functions, S and T. So by definition, it's the expected value of E to the ISX. And then this one is T, similarly defined. Um, since this you know, expectation is a linear operator, we can break it out like this. But then these can be factored. So we factor out the smaller one, the I of T. So then, and then this is actually uh, S minus T, but which we defined as H. So when you multiply this back into it, you get this one again. So this is true. And then um, now it's the absolute value of the expected value, which is less than the expected value of the absolute value. So this is true. And then the modulus or except a, a absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values, but we showed that the uh, modulus of this is one, so it goes away. So we, what's left is this modulus, okay? So if we look at the limit as H goes to zero, I put infinity, but that should be zero. Um, where am I? Oh, I did the wrong one. So this should be zero. Zero. So let's let X go to zero here. Um, and so which by this right here we just showed was less than or equal to this as h goes to zero. So now the question is, can we take this limit through the integral sign or through the expectation? And the answer is yes, because this function is bounded by two. You know, it's the absolute value of the sum is less than or equal to the absolute value of each of those added together. So this is less than or equal to one, and that's equal to one. So this function is less than or equal to two. So it is bounded, and we can take this limit in. And then as the limit of h goes to 0, this goes to 0, but e to the 0 is 1, so we get 1 minus 1, which is 0. So now, thus, if we, for a given epsilon, we can choose h sufficiently small. So that is this absolute difference less than delta. And then when, um, if, we can, if we choose a delta such that this is less than epsilon. And we can do that because this goes to zero. So if we keep making h or delta sufficiently small, then we're guaranteed that this is less than alpha, which then that's the requirements of absolute continuous. Uh, number four, we're looking at the, the characteristic function of x plus d, where d is a random variable x x is a random variable, d is a constant. So by definition, it's this. So you plug in the random variable here, which is x plus d, and then the properties of e, you can break it out. Well, this is a constant, so it comes outside the expectation. Well, and that's just the uh, characteristic function for x. So looking at c times x, the characteristic function for c times x, by definition, it's this, and then, um, since these are all product, it's associative, so it doesn't matter what order we multiply them in. So we can group the C and the T together. Well, then this is just the characteristic function of X uh, evaluated at CT. Um, four, where it's a linear combination at CX plus D, I probably should have put that, follows immediately from four and five. So I'm going to skip that in the interest of time. So for seven, Let's assume the expected, the nth moment is finite. Then um, we want to take the nth derivative of this. But this is defined as the expected value of, of this, e to the itx. And so can we take this through the integral sign, which means take it through this expectation? And the answer is yes. The nth derivative of a characteristic function is finite, assuming that the nth moment is finite. And in the second video, I show that, that um, 
that we can take this integral or the differentiation through this expectation. And then when you do that, the nth derivative of e to the itx is is uh, i to the n, x to the n, e to the itx. Um, so when we take this, which is this, and evaluate it at zero, that says put uh, zero in for t, and that is one, so it goes away, and this is a constant with regards to the expectation, so it's i to the nth, e to the uh, expected value of the x to the n. Okay. Well, that's all I have for today. I have uh, probably five or six more videos. We're going to do examples. We're going to do the inversion of the characteristic function. Uh, we'll probably do a few more properties. Um, it's uh, kind of an exciting series that we're doing here. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.